Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, I want to start talking about the reactions and the nature of the carbonyl bond, in particular aldehydes and ketones. What I have drawn for you here is the molecule acetone, or propanone. Propanone has a carbonyl compound on the middle carbon of a three carbon chain. And as you can see from the electrostatic maps of CO double bonds, there's a pi bond associated with the carbon-oxygen double bond, which is the reactive bond in this case. And since the oxygen is more electronegative, than the carbon, this bond is going to be polarized towards the oxygen. And we can see that in the electrostatic map of a CO double bond where there's a lot of negative charge density on the oxygen and a lot of positive charge density on the carbon. If you think about the pair of electrons that's involved in that pi bond and you break that and put it up onto the oxygen, you can draw a resonance form with that bond broken and that lone pair in this position. In this case we'd have a formal minus charge on oxygen and a formal plus charge on the carbon. This gives you a better indication of where the charges are in a carbonyl compound. And this dictates the nature of nearly all the reactions of a carbonyl compound. That is if you have electrophiles or protons for example they're going to react at the oxygen so things which are positively charged electrophiles will act at the oxygen. Things which are negatively charged such as nucleophiles are going to react at the carbon. Uh, that is the case in all carbonyl compounds. And the pi bond when it breaks, the electrons always flow to the oxygen because that's the more electronegative atom in a CO double bond. Well one of the main reactions of carbonyl compounds is the addition of nucleophiles to the CO double bond to break the pi bond and add another group. And we can add many kinds of nucleophiles such as oxygen nucleophiles as hydroxide ion. We'll talk a little bit later about sources for hydride ions. They don't just freely float around in solution, but there are ways to deliver H- to a carbonyl compound to add a hydrogen. Carbanions, we saw carbanions earlier in the alkyne chapter. Remember we could take an alkyne and take off the end hydrogen to make a negative charge and use that as a nucleophile to do SN2 substitution. Well those can also be used to do additions to CO double bonds. Um, but there are other kinds of carbanions we're going to talk about which are much more versatile and allow us to do a lot of different types of reactions to make various kinds of alcohols. Um, alkoxide ions, cyanide ions, these are all examples of very strong negatively charged nucleophiles and these tend to react very readily with carbonyl compounds without any additional assistance to make the compounds more reactive. Carbonyl compounds do react with neutral nucleophiles as well. Things with a lone pair that don't have a charge such as water, alcohols, and amines can react with carbonyl compounds. However, there has to be some kind of activation involved. Either you make the carbonyl more reactive by adding an acid to it and protonating the oxygen or you use a strong base to deprotonate these to make them into a negatively charged nucleophile. So the concept is either make the carbonyl more, more positively charged or make the nucleophile more negatively charged and increase the reactivity one way or the other. Well I want to talk about a class of reagents which we refer to as the Grignard reagents. Named after the chemist who discovered these molecules, Victor Grignard. What he did was he took any kind of organic halogen compound such as bromomethane and reacted those with magnesium metal. And in this case, magnesium will donate its electrons to insert in between the carbon-bromine bond to form what we refer to as an organometallic reagent. That is a carbon-metal bond, or you can think about this as a carbanion, a CH3 minus MgBr plus, magnesium in the plus two oxidation state. These tend to be good nucleophiles and can react with carbonyl compounds. The nice thing about this reaction to make these reactive carbanions is that you can do this from any kind of organohalogen compound pretty much. Even those that are attached to sp2 carbon such as benzene. Bromobenzene will react very readily with magnesium to generate benzene Grignard reagent, what we refer to as phenyl magnesium bromide. This has a negative charge on the carbon which acts as a nucleophile so we can use this directly as a nucleophile in forming new carbon-carbon bonds. These Grignard reagents are great nucleophiles for reacting with carbonyls and I'll just show you an example if we use formaldehyde where we have two hydrogens here and the carbon minus 
The carbon minus will react at the carbonyl carbon and break the CO double bond. We'll get an intermediate alkoxide. Um, and we have to use non-protic solvents. So one of the things about these Grignard reagents are that they are very basic. So if you have water around, they will react with water very readily and just be protonated and be destroyed. So you'll just form methane in this case. Um, if you have acidic hydrogens or protic hydrogens on your molecule, such as an NH compound or an OH alcohol somewhere on your molecule, those will also destroy the Grignard reagents. So in addition to being good nucleophiles, these are also really good bases. So we do have to be careful about the conditions that we do these in. But we can carry out this reaction in non-protic solvents such as ether solvents. And then at the end we can add a source of acid to protonate the alkoxide and generate our alcohol product. So in this case we've added a methyl group, we've extended the carbon chain, and if we use formaldehyde as a starting material, we'll form a primary alcohol. We could do the exact same thing with bromobenzene. We take bromobenzene, react it with magnesium, you generate the Grignard reagent from the benzene molecule, react that with formaldehyde. It will do the exact same reaction, follow that up with a source of H plus to protonate, and then we have extended on the benzene ring a CH2OH group and made, again, a primary alcohol. Notice that if we use more substituted carbonyl compounds such as an aldehyde where we have a carbon on the end of a chain and we add another group to that, we end up with a secondary alcohol because we've added now a methyl group in this case in addition to the existing alkyl group that's already on there. So an aldehyde will generate a secondary alcohol, a ketone where there are no hydrogens left will generate a tertiary alcohol. And again, the beauty of the Grignard reagents in doing this chemistry is that we can make the nucleophile that we're adding from many kinds of different compounds. As long as you have a bromine or chlorine or iodine or something that the magnesium can react with, you can generate a Grignard reagent and make it into a nucleophile. This Grignard addition to aldehydes and ketones to make alcohols provides us with a lot of possibilities for synthesizing molecules that have alcohol in them. So for example if we take something like uh, the ketone and add phenyl magnesium bromide as a first step and the second step add a source of acid, what we end up with is a new tertiary alcohol where we have added on now a benzene ring to make a larger molecule. This is great for synthetic strategy and we can think about how to make alcohols by disconnecting, thinking backwards from this if we want to add that group to the carbonyl compound. Well, let's take a look at how we can use this Grignard reaction to synthesize alcohols using various strategies. I have two examples of alcohols here, and what I want you to think about is how would we make these from an organohalogen compound such as a bromoalkane and a carbonyl compound such as an aldehyde or ketone. Well, the way to think about this strategy is to think about where the bond might have been broken and think backwards. This is the product that we want to achieve. How could we make that product? So if we, if we think about making this bond through an addition to a carbonyl compound, we can think about using the right side of this, an ethyl group, as the Grignard reagent, and the left side of this as the carbonyl compound. So from this, we could think about the reaction of this aldehyde plus the two carbon Grignard reagent. And that two carbon Grignard reagent comes from the bromo compound with the addition of magnesium. So this is a way to synthesize that. We can add ethyl group to this particular aldehyde. But let's say our starting materials, bromoethane and this aldehyde weren't available. But we could think about that the other way. So instead of breaking the right side of this, let's think about making the bond on the left side. This could have come from now this part as the nucleophile. So we would have this Grignard reagent plus this aldehyde which has three carbons. And this of course comes from the 2-bromopropane plus magnesium. So our starting materials in this case are 2-bromopropane and propanal. So the thing when we're thinking about synthetic strategy we have to see which of these the starting materials on the left or the starting materials on the right are the more readily available when we design a synthetic strategy. Well, we can do the same analysis for the molecule on the bottom. And the most easy uh, way to make this molecule is to add the methyl group here to cyclopentanone. 
So this ketone is readily available and we can make the nucleophile CH3 from CH3 magnesium bromide. That of course comes from bromomethane with the addition of magnesium. So bromomethane and cyclopentanone are our two molecules. But I will point out, although it's not as efficient as bringing two things together, we can think about this as a cyclization reaction. So if this is a carbonyl compound where we add a group to make a ring, that means the bromine end and the carbonyl have to be within the same molecule. So if we look at one, two, three, four, five, six, we need a six carbon chain. This would come from this molecule where the carbonyl is on the number two carbon. If we simply treat this with magnesium, we'll generate the Grignard reagent out on the end. I'm just gonna show that here as the negative charge. That is the Grignard reagent. And then this can cyclize onto the carbonyl compound to generate our cyclic product. So it is possible to do this reaction within the same molecule to make rings.